So in the previous lecture, we have looked at uh, different ways of writing irreducible representations. We have actually, we have just mentioned different ways of writing irreducible representation. And one of the ways was unit vector transformation. So let us finish on that. So the two types of unit vectors we have seen was a linear set of vectors, which are unit vectors along uh, X, Y, and Z axis, right? And then the second set we have seen was the rotational vectors, which are anti-clockwise rotation of X axis when visualized from positive side of the axis towards origin. Similarly, we have RY and we had RZ. So we can see that the effect of symmetry operations onto these vectors gives rise to irreducible representations. For example, we saw the case of uh, C3V where we, I'll not write all the elements, but so for example, we saw, let's say if we take uh, tau XYZ where we are doing operations onto XYZ basis, we saw that we can form a three cross three matrix. And then similarly, if we do it uh, for C3, we, we saw again, it can give us three cross three matrix. And then this can be block factor into two cross two and one cross one, right? And similarly for Sigma V and so on, we can observe. So this upon block factorization gives you tau one, which is of uh, two cross two order and tau 2 which is of 1 cross 1 order and both are irreducible representations right so this we saw so now let us uh, see so although it is easy to visualize the effect of operations onto x y and z but effect of operations onto rx ry rz is little uh, it's not as trivial as x y z so let us see a uh, certain thumb rules which actually help you to see the effect of operations onto Rx, Ry, Rz. So thumb rules for unit vector transformations. So effect of rotation. Let's first look at effect of rotation. So character is represented by chi. Character can also be called as uh, if it's one cross one element it is trace of the matrix element but if it is more than one dimension then it is strictly trace or we can say a particular matrix element so let's just call it as character of c and z when c and z is operated upon x y z or r x r y r z this character remains same so that means if you are operating C and Z on X and you are operating R on Rx, result will remain same. If X goes to positive X or negative X, Rx will also go to positive X or negative Rx, right? So if, for example, if uh, we are doing C and Z on X, it will go to minus X. So that means the character will be minus one. And so similarly, if you are doing C and Z on Rx, it will go to minus Rx, so character again will be minus one. So the effect of rotation, the character of C and Z remains same whether you are doing it on XYZ or Rx, Ry, Rz. So that is easy. Now for effect of inversion. So character under I inverts x y z and remains same for r x r y r z what does it mean so uh, if you are doing a uh, inversion operation so x goes to minus x y goes to minus y z goes to minus z so character inverts under x y z so that means you will get minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 as a character whereas character under i will remain same for rx ry rz that means rx will remain same as rx ry will remain same as ry rz will remain same as rz so that means the character will remain as plus 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 
so plus one plus one plus one so that means the character under x y z is opposite to the character under r x r y r z okay so that is easy now let us look at the effect of reflection so let's say these are the basis sets r x r y r z and these are the operators sigma x y sigma y z sigma z x so again if we are talking about any other sigma which is not oriented along the axis then you will have to calculate the new axis system and then do all sorts of maths but it is easy if you do only for sigma x y y z z x okay so now let's see what happens here so x y if you are doing x and y remains as x and y so the character will be plus one plus one z goes to negative and it's quite the opposite here so rx and ry will be reflected as negatives and z will remain positive similarly for yz it is x which is negative one one and x which is positive minus one minus one so you see that again it is opposite for reflection zx will be positive for this and negative for this and then it will be positive for this minus and minus one here right so effect of reflection is also easy now effect of improper axis so character of s and z for z is opposite of rz so typically if you see that the character under s and z for z is equal to minus 1 right but for rz it will be plus 1 why is that so you can see that s and z is actually c and z into sigma xy right so if you are doing c and z operation onto z it will remain as z if we are doing sigma xy onto z so onto z so this will be 1 into minus 1 right so this will come out to be minus 1 whereas if we are doing onto rz so c and z on rz so if you are doing on rz so c and z on rz will remain as same whereas sigma xy on rz so sigma xy so we can read from here so if you see sigma xi on rz it is positive one right so it is actually positive so you will get product as positive so this will be opposite of the two right so a character will be opposite for z and rz okay so that is easy so now also you can use this to generate irreducible representations but we will see in different examples when you do it it will not be generating the complete set of irreducible representations and hence we have to resort to something called as great orthogonality theorem so let us look at what that is so great orthogonality theorem so let me first write down the complete statement and then i will try to explain what the theorem states So let us look at the definition. So in the set of matrices constituting IR representations, any set of corresponding matrix elements behaves as the component of a vector in H dimensional space, such that all such vectors are mutually orthogonal and square of its length is equal to H by Li. So let us look at one by one, what does it mean actually? So it's a complicated statement, but uh, 
let's see let's take an example and see what does it mean so in the set of matrices constituting ir representation so let's take the case of c3 v point group because we have seen the matrices there so let me write down all the class elements expanded because here we are dealing with the matrices so matrix for different even if the trace of the class elements are same the matrices are different right so i'm not going to write the complete matrices i'll just mention i'm mentioning this point because it is important for this theorem okay now let's write down first irreducible representation which is of 2 cross 2 matrix okay so i'll just write down all the matrices and i will mention that these are the corresponding elements of the matrices of a given irreducible representation so for example in a 2 cross 2 matrix you will have four elements so i'm just giving a color code to all the corresponding matrix elements because it talks about the corresponding matrix elements here right and then let's choose one more color so you have okay and then let's also write one more irreducible representation for one cross one matrix so in this case the matrix element is only one right so if you are talking about corresponding matrix elements it means only one element basically which is given by this color over here okay so we have seen so set of matrices constituting ir representation so these are the set of matrices which are constituting ir representation this is one set this is another set right so and we have also seen what is the corresponding matrix element so these are the corresponding matrix elements for one particular set behaves as the components of a vector in h dimensional space okay so now what are the components of a vector in h dimensional space what does it mean so let's start with a simple case of three dimensional vector so three dimensional vector is represented by let's say x y z is the coordinate of that vector and if the vector length is r so you can write this as x i plus y j plus z k right where i j k are unit vectors along x y and z dimension right so x y z are the components of a vector in three dimensional space this is a three dimensional space where x y z are mutually orthogonal to each other now here we are talking about h dimensional space so what is h dimensional here h dimension is nothing but order of this group and we are saying that the corresponding matrix elements so let's say if we are talking about these matrix elements a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 so these form a vector let's call that vector as a a1 i plus a2 j plus a3 k and so on okay so here h is the order of the group so order of the group is six here so in this case it is in six dimensional space these are the components of the vector okay so all these matrix elements form components of a vector in h dimensional space such that all the vectors are mutually orthogonal so when i say mutually orthogonal what do i mean if i take another vector as b vector let's say i call it as b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 b6 then my b is nothing but b1 i plus b2 j plus b3 k and so on because it's a vector so i'm just writing caps where caps are unit vectors along these dimensions e c3 and okay now when i say that these vectors are mutually orthogonal that means my a dot b is equal to zero right that's the definition of uh, orthogonal vector so if these two vectors are uh, mutually orthogonal the product of these two components and the summation over all operations will go to zero 
okay and then square of its length if i talk about square of its length uh, then the square of the length of this vector is nothing but a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square and so on will be equal to h by li so if i write mod of a it will be h by li what is li here li is the dimension of the given irreducible representation we are talking about okay and then h is the order of the group so in this case let's say if we are talking about tau 1 so for tau 1 h will be 6 h will be 6 for any tau here but uh, li will be equal to 2 for this tau 1 right okay so that makes sense so now this orthogonality theorem does make sense that any component of this corresponding matrix elements form the components of a vector in h dimension space and these vectors are mutually orthogonal and they are normalized we can write here normalized such that square of its length is equal to h by li so now let us look at now that we have understood the meaning of this theorem so let us uh, see how to write this theorem in uh, mathematical form so let's see how to write it up so if i have summation over all r because we are summing over all the symmetry operations so r here is a symmetry operation so we are taking summation over all r and we are talking about tau i r m n and tau j r m prime n prime and then we have to take complex conjugate of this if we are dealing with complex numbers if we are dealing with complex numbers then one of the factor here in the product will be complex conjugate you can take complex conjugate of any of this it does not matter okay so this is equal to h over li lj and this will be delta ij delta m m prime delta n n prime okay so let us look at the meaning of all of this so r is symmetry operation okay so we have seen so this is summation over all symmetry operations m and n are indices of various matrices right so m n represent basically mth row and nth column of a particular matrix okay and then tau i is i -th irreducible representation okay so tau j is j th irreducible representation and so on h is order of the group we all know that and li is dimension of ith ir representation okay or we can say dimension of tau i what do you mean by dimension dimension means the size of the matrix if the matrix is one cross one li is one if the matrix is two cross two li is two and so on okay now deltas are kronecker deltas delta is kronecker delta we all know what this means it takes the value as uh, 0 if i is not equal to j takes the value as 1 if i is equal to j and same is for mm prime and nn prime right okay so now let us uh, quickly look at the orthogonality condition and the uh, normalization condition okay if the vectors are chosen So we know what vectors we are talking about now. If the vectors are chosen from matrices of different 
IR representations. Okay, so that means then we say that they are orthogonal. So we saw the example of uh, a different IR representation that is tau one and tau two. If we are taking the matrices vectors which are formed by components from different IR representations, then these will be orthogonal. So that means my this implies that i is not equal to j. The moment you say that i is not equal to j, the right hand side goes to zero, right? And what happens to left hand side? Left hand side remains same, right? There is no change. So what we had will remain same. So tau i r m n tau j r m prime n prime, right? Now let's say if the vectors are chosen from same IR representation, if the vectors are chosen from matrices of same IR representation, they are still orthogonal. So in this case, we are talking about M is not equal to M prime n is not equal to n prime so that means we are talking about the product of which two matrices matrices which are formed by this vector and this vector for example okay so this set of vectors and this set of vectors or this and this set of vectors okay so in this case your m and m prime and n and n prime will not be equal Okay, so again, due to delta m m prime and delta n n prime, you will again see that the right hand side will be equal to zero and the left hand side will remain as same. Okay, now the normalization condition. So for normalization, what we had, i is equal to j. We have to take from the same product. So normalization condition means that you are taking a product of a1 with a1 right so i is equal to j m is equal to m prime n is equal to n prime because we are multiplying the same vector twice so this means that you have i equal to j m is equal to m prime and n is equal to n prime so this implies that you have summation over all r tau i r m n this is my first and then the second is also same so this goes as square right and then this becomes h upon li right so th this is the mathematical meaning of what we just explained using c3v point group example and we saw that how these vectors are orthogonal and normalized so in the next class we will see different properties of uh, this GOT that is great orthogonality theorem and then how these properties are actually used to deduce irreducible representation without having to worry about what is the basis set, what is the effect of symmetry operation onto the basis set or onto the molecule also. So we'll not worry about all of this, we'll just take a point group, pick up a point group and then write down the irreducible representation by doing the maths defined by great orthogonality theorem properties okay so that's all for today so see you in next class